Hey, here we go for the questions for April 7th. And um, uh, it's the three. Remember the most three prevailing questions uh, after today's message? It says, after enduring trials, Job says to the Lord, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Can you explain what he means? Well, we know this, that the Bible says that no man can physically see God and live. In fact, we know that Moses came the closest, but Moses was tucked in to the cleft of the rock and God shadowed Moses' face until he passed by and Moses saw the afterglow of God. Just that event, by the way, caused Moses' face to glow. When Job says that I had, I, I've seen him, Job is announcing, if you read that whole incredible narrative of Job's experience, that he had heard of God's greatness, that he had heard of God's love, that he had heard of his attributes. Can I put it this way? That Job had God in theory, but now that he had suffered what he had suffered, he had come to know God in reality. That the suffering opened up his spiritual eyes to behold God. And that is a vision, that is an ability to see that frankly, I'm I don't know how to make, I just have to trust God that he communicates this to you because it's something personal, but through suffering, you can see God more in the moment and in the issue than by some aberration or some physical thing. I hope that makes sense to, to you, but it's like I said a moment ago, if you want to really experience Jesus, how bad do you want to experience Jesus? Enough to follow along with him even if it means persecution and hardship? Well, God is not gonna, he, God never prostitutes his followers. He never molests his believers. He reveals himself to us in those darkest moments. So remember that. And remember, as I said today, get up and run toward the fiery trial. David ran toward his, I should have used that today, by the way. <laughs> David ran toward his fiery trial. It was named Goliath. And God took care of the situation. I have to remember that for third service. And then number two, if you were thrown in prison and tortured for being a Christian, wow, a lot of people are right now, what would be your go-to psalm or worship song and why? What an awesome question. My go-to sermon would be, I mean, sorry, my go-to psalm would be Psalm 91. I'd start there, Psalm 91. My go-to song, um... Probably the old hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I'd go to that. And, oh, and why? Why these verses, why that chapter, why that song? Because those, those communicate to me that he is my defense. He's my defender. He loves me so much that he did all that, that that's going to get me through my prison experience. Look, I'm very keenly aware that in California... Um, I could I could be arrested because I don't I don't I don't preach the political correctness. I know that the Bible verse by verse is hate speech in California. So I mean nobody wants to go to prison, but I'm actually aware that in California pastors very well could go to prison if we preach the word. If we preach the word, that would be the qualifier. That if we preach the word. Uh, we would be persecuted for it. Number three, how can we practically rejoice in our sufferings? Exactly that. The answer is yes. You choose to worship in the midst of your fiery trial. Your question is, how can we practically rejoice, get up and embrace it, knowing that, it, that God is in it? Sickness, cancer, broken home, uh, your husband left you because you're a Christian? Get up and receive what God is doing. He didn't tell, isn't it amazing? He never said, I want you to understand what I'm doing. God never said that to us. He said, you can pray for understanding. But God demands and requires of us to trust him. Trust him. So you let today's message marinate in your heart. And we'll pick it up in a few weeks because we've got Passion Sunday coming up, Palm Sunday, and then Resurrection Sunday. And then we'll be back in First Peter to finish off this section, okay? God bless you.